and welcome back to World of Tanks Bootcamp with Sethica. Now this episode is going to be a bit different in that we are not going to be talking about me, rather we are going to be talking about the enemy team and the critical mistakes that they made here on Hemmelsdorf. Now as most of you are probably aware, Hemmelsdorf got this big giant building on the top of the hill. <coughs> Usually what you see is that most of the team, especially in encounter mode, as this is, go for the hill and try to take it. And that's usually a good idea since <coughs> since what you get out with in that case is a uh, natural advantage since the hill can overlook most of the map and you have easy access to get down from the hill and assist wherever is needed. So usually the hill the one the team who wins the hill usually has a very good chance of winning the map unless they're already being capped out. Now, I'm in the object 416, a very low tank with literally, I think, a couple of degrees of gun depression, so not that optimal. Oh, and I missed that one shot on the Rymsic Borsic, that's too bad. But as you can already tell, most of both teams have gone up here, although considerably less on our team than on the enemy team, as far as we can tell so far. So, usually what you see is a couple of heavy tanks sitting around here, duking it out, and most of the team... Oh, a bit of... big bit... big deal... a big part of the team moving this way. So, I'm going to be sitting over here, trying to at least assist a little bit with this Type 59. But, I notice that we've got an ISU 152 down there. So I go out quickly and deal with that 110 who is at low health. However, notice this ISU 152. The the enemy team are going to make a very critical error in regards to him. Namely, they're not going to kill him and they're going to allow him to simply sit and shoot at them. Now, as you can see, they are go they are currently shooting quite a bit at them. However, because I've noticed that he is down there and he's a very valuable tank for us in this situation. If he stays alive and can get and can support us up here, we will have a massive gun sitting right down there, capable of simply destroying the enemy team. And this right here is the critical error that they are making. They are not pushing. They are just sitting around in clear view of the ISU 152. That is a situation you never ever want to be in. You want to push. Now if all of these tanks had gone... Now admittedly there is four tanks there. We are... Let's see, we are six, seven? We are a total of seven friendly tanks here, with if kind of counting this Type 59. Nine. However, we have uh, four, uh, eight, ten, ten enemy tanks right here. So, as you can tell, they are they've got the numbers advantage, but they are allowing us to simply sit here. And at this point, the game is already pretty much over, because. This ISU, who they are apparently not willing to kill, and now he's been joined by a Type 59, they are simply making mincemeat out of the enemy. There is no, there is no point at which they are going to be able to shoot down there, or rather, there is no t time where they are going to be able to shoot at me and my friend here in this IS-8, without getting shot at, or at least being threatened by that ISU and that Type 59. Now, I just want to take a moment here, right? <clears throat> Notice the sheer carnage that's happened here. If all of these tanks had made a conscious decision to go either around here and push through here, since there was only at the time, at the time there was only me and that Type 59, if at least four of those tanks had gone around, pushed, they would have had the flanking shots into the, all of our heavy 
heavies and quite possibly have gotten out with it a lot better. I'm not saying they would have won because they would have still been shot at a little bit by that ISU-152 down there. However, it would have been a much better choice. Usually what you find in World of Tanks is it is always a better idea to make a maybe flawed decision than to simply do nothing at all. All of these tanks were willing to simply sit here because none of them were willing to risk the damage they would take moving around or better yet moving the other way around. They had the clear numbers advantage. They had the upper hand. However, they were willing to simply sit here and this carnage, this absolutely amazing graveyard of tanks right there is evidence enough. And of course at this point the game is completely over. There is absolutely no chance for anyone involved. So I, I usually find that what you really kind of expect going to go on up there uh, let's take this in the post-game stats rather now what you usually expect is that one team or both teams are going up there with the idea that they want to win right but usually a lot of them there are always a lot of people who are unwilling to take damage. This is a critical error and I've talked about it before. None of those tanks were willing to be the first ones to go out <coughs> and push. What they needed to do was to push our team. They needed to take advantage of their superior, hopefully at least superior DPM and move around the enemy, move around our team simply flanking them and swarming the us with the, their sheer numbers. What they should never do is kind of go for it and kind of don't. They all sat on that corner and while they were uh, quite decently engaged with me and my friends, uh, my friend in the Type 59, and quite decently in cover from me, they were not counting on that ISU 152. They were sitting in full view of him. There was not a single tank of those tanks that could not get shot at by the ISU-152. And he simply sat there. I don't know, <clears throat> I'm not entirely certain if they were unable to spot him, usually they can, or if they were simply, if he was playing smartly. However, once they had seen him down there, they needed to deal with him. And if they could not deal with him, they needed to push around the other side of the, the other flank the other around the other the other way around the little building there they should not have just sat there it would have been a better choice for all of them to go down from the hill and simply wait in ambush rather than sitting up there and letting that ISU and that type 59 mangle them that was further complicated by me and my friend in the Type 59 punishing them whenever they were pointing their guns down towards that ISU. They were in a deadlock. They could do nothing on that side because none of them were willing to move forward. None of them were willing to goat their enemy team. As I've said, as I've talked about before, you need to goat your team into pushing. And that's exactly what they should have done. Probably around the other, not around the side where I was on, but the other side, where there were, there were a simple, there were only three heavy tanks there, I think, if I remember correctly. There were three heavy tanks there, yes. Only three heavy tanks. Think about that. They had a Rymusig Borsig, two shots from him, and most of them are dead. And they were, they were ten. There were ten of them. Ten of those people. We had six, seven maybe. It was a complete wash. Alright, so let's uh, quickly go over my stats here. Just to simply finish it off, I got 32,536 credits gross, 2,942 experience earned, and that was my first second class master badge. That just shows how much I've played this tank is. 
I've curr I'm currently grinding it out, trying to get up to higher tiers of it. And I'm not doing very well in such a lightly armored tank. Looking here, we can see that that ISU did more damage than the two other tanks, the two other top tanks combined. And probably as much as the next six on my team. And he did more damage than the entirety of the <laughs> enemy team top. He was allowed to simply sit down there and completely overwhelm them. Once they had, once they decided they did not want to kill him, they had lost. Once they decided they did not want to take the damage, take the risk of moving forward or moving backwards, they had lost. And it's as simple as that. Now sadly, I was not the one to spot them. So I did not get that spotting damage. That would have been glorious. Oh yes, 5,000 spotting damage. I am guessing he could also. It was probably at that Type 59 who ended up doing all of the spotting damage. And finally I got myself 15,554 uh, net credits. Now I hope that you will all think about this and Never simply sit there. Make a choice. Either pull back or move forward. Don't sit in open fire. Don't sit anywhere where you are capable of being shot at and simply wait. Ex in fact, never simply sit and wait. It's usually... Ah, well, there's, there are cases. I'm being a bit overzealous there. But, in general, make a choice. Don't simply wait for the enemy to take one for you. And with that, I hope you enjoyed and I hope I'll see you back tomorrow for more World of Tanks. Have a good evening.